In today's video, let's talk about five essential crops to safeguard your future. Simply storing food, that's not enough. Storing food doesn't make us a prepper. Storing food just delays the inevitable. It's a combination, a holistic approach of storing food and the right foods and then learning to produce our own food that allows us to have a long-term survival plan. In this video, we're going to talk about those five essential crops that are going to help us survive for the long term. Getting the skills to grow these foods is essential. You must start now gathering the skills to grow. I know that you may have seeds stored away somewhere, but learning to grow those seeds is important while we're still operating with a safety net. So let's go ahead and find some containers, find a way to begin to grow these foods and allow it to make an impact on our life today and prepare us for the inevitable food crisis that's coming down the road. The first of these essential foods, beans. They're productive, they're easy to grow, they're reliable, and they're tolerant of all kinds of different soils. It's rich in fiber, antioxidants, and proteins. On the protein front, it's the closest replacement we have to meat. Beans allow us to continue the function and gives us the energy that we need, that long-lasting energy that's driven by protein. One of the great things about beans is most beans can be grown vertically in a very small footprint grown up trellises or grown up poles, it doesn't matter. But to be able to use that vertical space is important when we're working with a limited footprint that we have to grow in. There are several different kind of beans that we can look at. Number one, and I think the most easy to grow, are green beans. They're prolific producers and they are simply delicious. Now they don't store as well as some of the other beans, but green beans is always going to be high on the list. Another bean, pinto beans. Pinto beans can be dried and stored for a long period of time. Black beans fit that same bill as well as kidney beans. Both of those beans provide high nutrition. Black beans not quite as much in the calorie or nutrition department, but they still store a lot of essential proteins and amino acids that allow us to be able to survive, not just survive, but to thrive. And the last one of those beans that I think you should consider growing in this essential food category is soybean. Now there's multiple kinds of soybeans. Green soybeans are meant to be eaten fresh and I think that you should have a, uh, some green soybeans in your crop. And then also black seed soybeans which are designed to be dried. And these dried soybeans can be ground. They can be used as feed additives for your animals, as well as for consumption to increase the protein levels of the foods that we eat. The last and probably most important asset of growing beans as a survival crop is that they are a nitrogen fixer. They actually push nitrogen into the soil. So as we begin to grow these survival crops year after year by rotating high consuming nitrogen plants like tomatoes behind beans, it actually repairs the soil and prepares the soil to be able to feed some other crops in their place. So that makes beans number one on my survival food list because of the, the repair it does to the soil as we need that to grow other crops. The second crop we need to look at is potatoes. They're easy to grow. They're tolerant in many different climates and they also do well in various types of soil. They're high in calories and they bring a great diversity to our diet because they can be prepared so many different ways. When we're talking about survival, food fatigue is a very real thing. That if we have to eat the same thing over and over and over again, it becomes hard to intake enough calories to continue to go because food fatigue sets in and we just can't really stomach the amount of food that it takes to go. But with potatoes, they can be fried, they can be boiled, they can be mashed, they can be baked. There's so many different ways to prepare to potatoes, such a diverse food that it allows us to add some diversity to our diet while still eating the same thing. Number three on the list, squash. Both summer squash and winter squash. Why both kinds? I, we see winter squash mentioned a lot in survival foods, but summer squash is a prolific producer. It gets to maturity quickly and produces lots of fruit on each plant. That's why that I think summer squash is also a vital survival crop that we need to be growing in our gardens because it produces from spring 
all the way through into late fall. It's very tolerant of the heat and the cool days as we get into autumn, and it continues to produce. Also, summer squash, those male blossoms on the squash plant can be eaten as well, and they're highly nutritious. It gives us another way to diversify our food and bring more caloric density to that crop that's being grown. And then there's winter squash. Winter squash, like butternut, like spaghetti squash. Those squash, they mature later, so they're going to grow through the summer and into the fall. But once they produce, this is a storage crop. They're going to last for months and months under the proper storage conditions. And it's going to be those beans that we dry. It's going to be these winter squash that we have that are going to get us through those tough times, those tough days of winter when nothing else is growing outside. And we have to rely on things that we have grown and then placed into storage. One of the last benefits of winter squash is that there is some data that would indicate that winter squash seeds can actually help with worm and parasite infestation in the digestive tract. A lot of times in a survival situation, people make bad decisions. They drink water that hasn't been fully boiled or sanitized and parasites become a big threat to our survival in that survival setting. So having these seeds on hand can help eliminate um, that infestation of microorganisms and worms inside our digestive tract. Fourth on my list is field corn. Sweet corn is great. Sweet corn is amazing. It's great for eating fresh. But field corn is really the survival crop you want to lean into when you're looking at the corn family because of its ability to be able to be stored long term. Corn is one of those crops that's easy to grow. Now it's a heavy feeder. It needs lots of fertilizer. So you're going to have to have fertilizer on hand, either commercially produced fertilizer or that organic matter that you get from animals that you may be growing. But it is going to be a heavy feeder. But other than that, it's relatively easy to grow and tolerates lots of climates and temperatures. Corn is easy to use. Now, field corn has to be nixtamalized, which means that that coating on the outside has to be removed in order for us to digest the contents. But once that's removed, it's very easy to use and gives another source of diversity when it comes to planning our meals. Once it's been nixtamalized, it can be converted into masa or corn flour that can be used to make all kinds of different things and can even replace to some extent um, our body's desire and craving for flour. Corn is calorically dense. It provides the calories we need to be able to keep going. And it can be used as a feed additive for our animals so that we can grow the protein that we need in the form of chickens or cows or pigs or whatever it is. It can be used as an animal feed. So that makes corn number four on the list and a priority in every survival garden. I want to give two honorable mentions here before I move on to the fifth. Number one is tomatoes. Um, tomatoes are a high acid food, so they store well um, in canning and preserving. So tomatoes store well, and they also bring another level of diversity. I've talked about diversity in our food a lot because I believe that's important that we be able to maintain as much normalcy in life as we can in a survival setting, especially when it comes to our families. You may be able just to grind it out and eat beans and rice, but what about your wife and your children? There's going to need to be some food diversity there. So tomatoes allows us to have that diversity once again to be able um, to eat the foods that are familiar to us and to be able to keep things as normal as possible. And normalcy is absolutely important. The next honorable mention, herbs. Herbs of all kinds, cilantro, parsley, mint, it doesn't matter, but herbs are going to allow you to flavor those foods, it's going to bring some added excitement to the meals that we're having to prepare from these emergency crops. So do not discount herbs, and herbs are pretty easy to grow. As a matter of fact, most herbs grow like weeds. They literally grow like weeds. So plant an herb garden and lean into that herb garden and learn to cook from those fresh herbs that you find right there in that herb garden. The last crop is not one that we grow from the ground at all. Eggs. I believe eggs are the fifth most important crop that we can grow. They're easy to grow. Chickens are easy to maintain. They're easy to keep alive. And eggs are highly nutritious, 
full of the protein that we need, and they just keep producing. In the wintertime, they're not going to produce as much, but they're still going to produce. With some basic understanding and some basic knowledge, eggs can be stored for a long period of time, and that makes them an incredible survival food that we need to have on hand so that we can continue to press on and can continue to provide for our families, even in a grid down or a social unrest situation. Now, I know for a lot of people, thinking about growing food can be a daunting task. You may live in an apartment, you may live in a subdivision, but start small. Learn to grow these foods in containers. Potatoes can be grown in grow bags. Uh, corn is the thing that takes the most space. You can grow beans literally vertically on your balcony or on your back patio in containers. With a four inch spacing, you can grow a large number of beans in a very small space. But begin to learn these skills. Combining the skill of growing crops, these five essential survival crops, with food storage is a great way to ensure the safety and the future of our families and our loved ones. If you're looking where to get started on your prepper journey, we've created a free resource, a free tool for you to use to get a plan in place that you can follow. It's called the Emergency Food Storage Calculator. There's a link below that you can go to that free tool and you can use it. Now listen. When you get to the end of that tool, it's going to ask for your email address. We're not going to sell your email address. I'm not going to spam your email. We're not going to do any of those things. Use that free tool, and then we submit a very detailed report to you via email. That's why we ask for your email address, and then we'll have follow-up emails that will help walk you through the plan of getting these storage items in place. Thank you so much for watching this video. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. Until then, remember, we're just all growing and learning.